Congressman, thank you for being here tonight. Good to be with you. Sir, we've heard uh, a lot of juicy bits, for lack of better terms, still coming out of the IRS whistleblowers, uh, lots of testimony. Yeah. What do you think is the most important thing for Americans to know right now? Somebody's not telling the truth, and it sure doesn't look like it's the whistleblower. I think he's with the IRS like 14 years. He is, uh, uh, you know, credible, I think, in, in so many ways. He, he handled some of the biggest international uh, tax fraud cases uh, at the agency. So, um, and the things he's told us just do not correspond with what Merrick Garland said, what the U.S. Attorney David Weiss has said. Um, you know, they said they had the, the ability to, uh, Merrick Garland said his, he was going to take a hands-off approach and the U.S. attorney could make the decision on his own. Well, that's not what the whistleblower recorded. And, and the whistleblower was, Mr. Shapley was recording these after meetings, um, contemporaneously putting this down and, and memorializing this, putting this into memos, uh, sending these emails to, to some of his other agents on the case. So um, I think his, he seems very, very credible um, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a strong whistleblower, strong witness. Uh, and I think Mr. Mr. The Attorney General and David Weiss and some of these other people that we've now asked to talk to, um, we're looking forward to getting a chance to interview those and see what they have to say. Yeah, Chairman, that's a pretty important event. It's very rare when three House committees work together, but you're all going to work together, get some transcribed interviews of all of the major players, correct? Yep, yeah, that's exactly right. There's, I think, three U.S. attorneys we need to talk to. There's the assistant attorney, this Leslie Wolf, who Mr. Shapley talks about a lot. She's the one who's who said, you know, cancel the search warrant that they were wanting to do. She's the one who said, you can't ask when you're interviewing people, you can't ask about President Biden. You can't use the term the big guy. Uh, she's the one who uh, was, in, I think, involved in tipping off. Um, someone tipped off Hunter Biden's lawyers when they were when they were getting ready to do interviews of people involved in this in this case. So uh, I think that's someone we need to talk to. There's three DOJ attorneys. There's other assistant U.S. attorneys. And there's two FBI agents who are at this now, I think, somewhat well-known uh, meeting that that Mr. Shapley says was his red line meeting, this October 7th, 2022 meeting, where um, this was all, this was all, this information was was given to Mr. Shapley. Chief amongst that, that the key information was when David Weiss said he, he didn't have charging authority, um, which again, contradicts what Merrick Garland said under oath when the United States Senate was, uh, was, was asking him questions. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, you are chairman of judiciary, so I think that you are the perfect person to answer this question. According to Gary Shapley, according to David Weiss, um, the D.C. U.S. attorney in Washington, Matthew Graves, basically blocked charges against Hunter Biden. He's a Biden appointee, as is the attorney in California. <clears throat> I think a lot of Americans look at these situations, they look at the connections, and they have to wonder, and I agree, how does political maneuvering like this fall through the cracks of our judiciary, judicial system? Well, I mean, look, I think the, the, the logical conclusion is what the polling shows, um, that there's a double standard. And I, I, I've said this a couple of times, 60 some percent of the American people think there's a double standard at the Justice Department. They think that because there is. It sure seems obvious to anyone with common sense that there are two sets of rules and that's not supposed to be how it, how it operates. It's supposed to be equal treatment under the law, equal application of the law. That doesn't seem to be what happened here. And of course, when these U.S. attorneys turned down Weiss's um, uh, uh, focus on charging Hunter Biden in those jurisdictions, they in essence get rid of the 2014-2015 tax years, according to, again, Mr. Shapley's testimony. And that is the, those are the Burisma years. So this is when Hunter Biden was getting hundreds of thousands of dollars from this Ukrainian energy company. And he's getting it now, what looks like just got tax-free uh, income because they're not going to bring those charges. And it was the, it was those Biden-appointed U.S. attorneys, again, according to the whistleblower, who said no to Mr. Weiss in bringing those charges in the D.C. Uh, district and the Central District of California. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just before you came on, we played our first experts of an hour-long interview we did with Agent Chapley, and he goes into detail that to this day, Hunter Biden has still not paid his taxes on the 2014 uh, Burisma payments. I guess it was $400,000 of income he didn't clear. He estimates about $125,000 he gypped the American public. He still hasn't paid it back. He's about to uh, have his first uh, court hearing. Hunter Biden is later in, in July. Is anyone in Congress considering sending a letter on behalf of Congress to the judge, Judge Mary Ellen Narika, and saying, hey, you should hold off or hold, uh, hold off this plea deal and let us find out whether justice has been served here? 
Well, there's been a lot of talk about that. I don't know that there's there's a letter coming from Congress, <clears throat> but you know, you you sort of. I think I heard um, uh, 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 Jonathan Turley talk about this, who's you know an expert on the Constitution. You have to be, I think, a little careful in in having one branch of government tell a judge what to do at the sentencing phase. It's one thing to do an amicus brief for that kind of thing, I guess. But um, we'll take a look at that this this concept. But I don't think there's been anything that that's that's happened yet. Uh, I do think the judge, though, is, you know, if you're paying attention to this, and obviously this judge would be and listening to the news, there are lots of people who are saying, hey, wait a minute, you might want to step back and think about this. So uh, we'll leave that up to the judge what, what, what she ultimately decides to do. Yeah. Good. So regarding those, those unpaid tax bills by Hunter Biden, um, Democrats seem so unfazed by this. And I remember a time when Democrats were very concerned about unpaid tax bills. Rachel Maddow teased on her show for what seemed like a half a year that she was going to obtain Donald Trump's tax returns. And yet with this situation, you know, they, they used to wail over it, but now they don't care. Do you have any Democrat colleagues in the House who are actually concerned about this? I haven't heard anyone speak out yet, and, and frankly, it's it's unfortunate that's the situation today. There's like again, as we talked about earlier, there seems to be this this uh, this double standard. I do think it's interesting though that there have been a few more mainstream left leaning media outlets who have at least covered this story to some degree. I think the New York Times confirmed this issue with the special counsel and and with with someone else. Um, and, and of course, CBS had had an interview like like you all did with with the whistleblower, Mr. Shapley. So I do think you're seeing some of that there because I think it's just so alarming what we see. And again, this whistleblower seems so darn credible. Um, I, I think I think you know you, you almost sort of have to cover this even if you're the uh, left leaning press. Yeah, that is a big dynamic change. It also kind of goes back. We were all told in 19 and 20, there was nothing to believe about Burisma, nothing to believe about Joe Biden. It was all a mirage, the laptop, the Burisma payments. Now we know why that, those messages were be, being delivered to the American people, to Congress too, that the FBI you know, had this uh, uh, informant, that the IRS knew of these documents and the, and the amount of tax evasion and some of it involved Burisma. Yeah. Is there a, a moment where people look back and realize that 2019 and 2020, there was a disinformation operation run by the Democrats? You start to wonder, I mean, you were on this, but you were on this early. As you were one of the guys who would like, weigh on this at the, on the front end, as yeah. with so many of these stories where, uh, you know, the whole Trump-Russia thing and everything else, we, we, I mean, we were going back, clear back to 2017 we when we first <laughs> went on this. So um, we appreciate you guys' work on this. But, um, yeah, you, 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 again, it's, it's always the um, two lines always sort of stick out. It seems like they always accuse us of what they're doing. Um, and um, the, the other thing is, it's it's when, when when you get into this, the only thing you get wrong is it's usually worse than you thought when you get to the end of it, and it's that's that seems to be the case once again. Um, but we're just going to continue to dig, follow the facts, and we'll see where we go from there. Yeah, important. Sir, in the first block, we aired some of John's conversation with Gary Shapley, and he talked about how some of the crimes were kind of rudimentary, things that, that your basic level, low-level IRS agent would identify as money laundering or a crime. Um, we now know that, well, Tony Bobulinski a while ago was able to provide information, um, uh, Devin Archer, possibly Rob Walker, uh, Eric Schwerin. Are there going to be more names to come that the American people start hearing? Well, obviously, Mr. Comer is leading the investigation into the, the business aspect of this. Our concern is how the Justice Department handled the case. And then, of course, you got the whistleblower coming from the IRS. And so uh, Chairman Smith with, at the uh, Ways and Means Committee is involved uh, as well. So we'll, we'll just we'll just have to, to see how it all, all, all plays out. But we're committed to getting to the to the facts and to the truth. Uh, that's part of our constitutional duty to, to do the investigations that need to be done. And as I said at the outset, it's it's literally the a fundamental principle in our system of justice is equal treatment under the law and then equal application of the law. And that's that was the big concern Mr. Shapley had is he said this was preferential treatment. This was slow walking it because of who this individual was. This, again, is just all according to Mr. Shapley and the and the anonymous whistleblower who came forward, too. And if you just read there, which I'm sure you guys have is but anyone watching and, and listening, if, if you read their testimony, their opening statement, and then the transcript, you, you get a feel for uh, th th these guys, again, I think are good people serving our country and, and our government and very credible uh, witnesses. Mr. Chairman, we've got about 20 seconds left. Uh, Gary Shapley talked about lots of retribution from DOJ and IRS over the last several weeks since he started cooperating. How concerned are you? 
Well, we've seen that with other whistleblowers, as you know, guys. Uh, yeah. But but Garrett O'Boyle, what he was an FBI agent who who, who was uh, uh, the, the retribution he faced. Um, uh, others that have come come forward um, and talked to us. We've had a number of whistleblowers that have come to us over the last year and a half. So that is wrong. It looks like it's very real, though, what happened to them. And again, I think it just shows how credible they are. Absolutely. They've been very precise with their language as well, as are you always. Chairman Jim Jordan, we appreciate you being here with us tonight. We'll have you back on again very soon.